I mean, if, if they know, the elite of the world know that there's no salvation that's promised to them, you think they're going to show you the way to salvation? No. That's why all that we say is going to be in the name of the Lord and Savior. We have one power, and that's the most high. Get Deuteronomy 6 and 4. This is where it all begins. It's the first of all the commandments. The first of all the commandments. Let's read it. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Here, O Israel, the first of all the commandments. He said, Here, O Israel, and we are the Israelites. You are the Israelites. A Negro and Latino descent. Scattered among all nations. Read. The Most High, our power. We the Most High, our power. Israel. Read. Is one power. It's one power. Come on. And thou shalt love the Most High, thy power, with all thine heart. That's what it's all about. We got to love the Most High with all our heart, which is our mind. Read. And with all thy soul. All our soul. And with all thy might. All our strength. Come on. Read. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You know how you say? It's supposed to be in our mind. And we're supposed to teach the word of the Most High to our children. Read. And shalt take of them when thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Right, we're supposed to be talking about this word continually. But see, we've been disenfranchised from the word of the Most High because we've been taught lies by those that were born liars. They set up all these religions and allow our people to follow right along with them under these so-called religions. That's why I come from a Latin word, religio, mean to hold back, keep down and restrain. That's why you don't even know who you are. I got 74 different identities asking brothers who you are. What's your race? What's your nationality? Ask a sister, what's your nationality? What's your race? 74 different identities. That's lost to the utmost. Nobody else will give as many identities as we will as a people. That's why we know we're the lost 12 tribes of Israel. Point blank, people. Great. So we're supposed to teach our children these laws, that's the commandments. Read. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. And it shall be with the Most High thy power shall have brought thee into the land which he swore unto thy father. Yeah, we go into that land of Israel. When New Jerusalem come down, Most High will, we gonna be put in that land the most high promises. He's not a man he should lie. By us coming back to what? His laws and commandments. Follow his rules and regulations. When he brings us back to the land that he promised our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who was the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. That's our forefather. Read. To Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not. You know to give us great and beautiful, goodly cities that we what? Which thou buildest not. So we ain't gonna build these cities that the Most High talking about. Who gonna build it? Isaiah 16, 10 and 12. Let's find out. So we don't live in cities that we ain't got to build, y'all. We ain't gonna be oppressed by the oppressor anymore. Cause we got next forever and ever and ever. So who gonna build our cities? Isaiah 16 and 10. Book of Isaiah, chapter 60. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 10. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy wall. The sons of all these other nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel gonna do what? Shall build up thy wall. So they gonna build up our kingdom. Just like we built their kingdom, they gonna build our kingdom. They, they prepare, look, they, everywhere you look, they build it, right? <laughs> so they get prepared for what they gonna do in the kingdom, what they gonna do? Shall build up thy walls. They gonna build up our walls, read. And their king shall minister unto thee. And the king's gonna minister unto us, read. For in my wrath I smote thee. In the most high wrath, he smote us. For what? Not follow his laws, that the commandments, read. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Yeah, in his favor have he had mercy on the children of Israel. Come on. Therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. Now, our gates gonna be open continually. Read. 
They shall not be shut day or night. So they're gonna be shut day nor night. Why? That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Men gonna bring unto us. We the children of Israel. Cause we got next, we're gonna rule forever. You ready for that, brother? You be to rule forever and ever and ever, man. Our case gonna be over continually. That the Gentiles may bring in what? Forces of the Gentiles. The forces of the Gentiles. They're gonna work for us. But see our condition that we're in now, ghettos and slums, drugs all everywhere, you know, getting shot down, there's no repercussion for killing us. They make you feel like you can't see this, man. But this is real. That's why your faith gotta grow, man, to believe in the most high who love you. No matter how you look at yourself, he loves you. That's why you still walking around here today. Well, he could have pulled your card, man, and let you die today. Somebody could have came by a drive-by, could have shot you down. Or it might get you before you go home if you had a wrong mindset against him. But he loved you, man. That's why we're here to tell you. But the most high is the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob is the four or five of these twelve tribes of Israel, man. Read. And that their kings may be brought. You know, the kings gonna be brought to us, read. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. You know? The nation and kingdom that will not serve us shall what? Shall perish. Yeah, they're gonna be put to death if they don't want to serve the children of Israel. Understand this. Get uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 1. See, we're being set up already in this wicked world to know what's right and what's wrong. It's simple as that. What's righteous and what's wicked. So the most I set us up for this, read. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Yeah, a lot of you. First thing you do is call on massa, which means oppressor in Hebrew. Call up the police and so forth. Against your man, try and get him put in jail, try and get him incarcerated. You gonna call them before you call us? But we can actually deal with the council, the proper council, to bring you back together through the spirit of the Most High. We the saints, read. Verse two, do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? That we gonna judge the world. We gonna be the judges of this whole world, read. And if the world shall be judged by you, if the world gonna be judged by we, the saints of the Most High, read. Are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? You know what it say? Are we unworthy to judge the smallest matter? It's a small matter. A lot of times it ain't even that serious, man. But you're going to go to the law of the unjust. You know it's a wicked society before the saints. Know ye not what? Know ye not? And if the world shall be judged by you, know ye, and if the do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? That's everybody in the world to come, y'all. Ready? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Are we unworthy to judge the smallest matters? It's for our nation. That's why we as the Hebrews, like, we have something to go by. And that's the word of the Most High. His laws that you come after the faith of the Master of shot in the volume of the book. Come on. Know ye not that we shall judge angels. We gonna judge angels. We gonna be able to judge angels. Do you hear this? We gonna judge angels, read. How much more things that pertain to this life? How much more things that pertain to this easy life, this wicked life that we in right now? Which don't mean anything to the most high. John 17 and 9. So y'all think that the brother brought down and broke down John 3.16 at the most high and the Mashiach the most know this world. He don't know this world. See, the book of St. John, chapter 17, verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. Now you say, I pray for them. A certain group of people. Who you are, the Israelites, that's going to come back to him. So he don't pray for the world, everybody in the world, really. 
I pray not for the world, I don't pray for the world, man, but for them which thou hast given me, for those of us that the most I has given to Christ, for they are thine, they are the most highs, man. and all mine are thine, all. Mashiach Yahweh Shai is the most high, right? And thine are mine. Thine is Mashiach, right? And I am glorified in them. Glorified in us. We're coming back to him. To the glory of the most high, man. He say glorified in us. But if you don't see it, then you're lost. You're in darkness. You're in the gross darkness that this world is in. That's why we're here. I know it sounds strange to you because you haven't heard the real truth. Because you go to church. <laughs> or you listen to a pot, poor choppy preacher teach you what it is he should be teaching for the truth of his Bible and not from his own mind. Scattering your brain where you don't know nothing. Hand, hand you a Bible, say, show me what you're talking about. You can't bring forth nothing on it. Except for John 3.16. Y'all know about that. In the most high the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's our power. He's the power of our forefathers. Abraham, who had a son named, son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob. So that's his name forever, the memorial to all generations. So you can't go no further from him when you look at God. When you call God, who do you think he is? And he only know us. He don't know nobody else. That sounds far-fetched, right? But that's what the Bible's talking about. That's why they don't teach you that. But they know they'll lose all kind of money. If they taught that the most high only our power, he only know us. And can't nobody come forth and prove anything different. Straight up. We've been teaching this for years and years and years and years. And your pastor ain't gonna come out here and challenge us either. Straight up. They ain't gonna never challenge no Hebrew Israelites. Why? Because they don't know the Bible. They ain't been called to teach this Bible. They need to be sitting down learning what it is they need to learn to stop leading our people astray. Before the most high visit them. We hear, I talk about them a lot, but I want them to know that they got to come back to the Most High because the ones that they, that the Most High loves right up in them churches, man. And a lot of us come from the church. So don't think that just because I'm talking about the leaders, they're the ones that's calling the people to hear. And just like we can look at them, they can look at us. So you think they ain't never heard of Hebrew Israelites? They tell that people, don't listen to them. Don't listen to them brothers out there hollering, screaming at people. They ain't teaching the truth. Come on here with me and give me all your money. And you walk out, you, you walk, you walk in there, dumb, you walk out of there dumb. Like they baptize you, standing up there, a damn uh, dry devil, they put you in the water, bring you up, you a damn wet devil. There ain't nothing as you ought to be. Give me, give me a, uh, give me that John 15 and 3. Come on, tell me that. I know I got baptized, Lord, when I was young in the church. I, I was wicked as ever. Oh, I'm baptized, I'll be cleaned up, I'll be, I'll be righteous right now, I'll be bringing this up. Hey, ain't nobody teach me about no righteousness? Hey, this church, hey, this, come on, you gotta get baptized, you gotta get baptized, just follow suit with everybody else, man. Didn't know nothing when I went in there, didn't know nothing when I came out. I'm a witness of that. I know something now through the power of the Most High in His Word, what do you say? The book of St. John, chapter 15, verse 3. Now, ye are clean through the Word which I have spoken unto you. Not now you are clean through the word that he's speaking to us. Not any other way. Ephesians 5, 26. Well, let's deal with this. Baptism, so forth. There's nothing wrong with being baptized in the water if you got the word. I must have to get baptized. He was 30 years old. How about that? Y'all have thought about that? And even learning from birth. You see? The spirit of the most high was in the from the water. And he waited till he was 30 years old when John the Baptist baptized him. Understand this, because that's the time that the ministry is supposed to start it, from 30 to 50. And after you're 51 years old, then you become an elder. All y'all talking about your elders, you ain't no elder if you ain't 51 years old. That's the law, point blank. When you're 51 years old, yeah, now you're an elder. Most people I know that's older than 51, they don't respect y'all as no elders. Straight up, that's the law, man. Just keep the law if you're gonna follow. Let's deal with it. Read the book of Ephesians, chapter five, verse twenty-six. Right. That he might sanctify and cleanse it 
with the washing of water. Yeah, now you might sanctify and cleanse you up. Clean you up, because you're supposed to be taking a bath or a shower or some kind of way, washing yourself from head to toe every day. You're supposed to be clean, right? Yeah, you clean every day. You clean yourself up every day. But he said, the what? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Yeah. The washing of water by the word. That's how you cleaned up, man. By the word. Understand this. And understand this. Because, I, like I say, if you're not taught the Bible in its true righteousness, according to precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, all the different topics that's in this Bible, which is the book of life. You see? It's a book of life. Everything you think about is in this word. But see, y'all done got it twisted because you've been brain polluted by your massa. And that could be anybody right now. <laughs> that could be anybody that leads you astray, you know? That's who you follow. Whoever you following is your master. Because you are regurgitating the things that they are telling you to regurgitate. I mean, I've seen a pastor just up there just doing the same thing I heard when I was a little boy. I was a young, young man. Same old, same old. Ain't nothing ever changed, man. It's limited. Why? Because the most I ain't called them. He ain't called them. He ain't called them to tell you that you're a Gentile when you're the holy people of the most high. They can't separate anybody. What am I going to do when he come back? He just read it. Matthew 25, 31. What is he going to do when he come back? Since y'all think everybody the same, everybody not the same. No way you're going to say that everybody the same. He proves it here. When he come back, let's see what he going to do. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Now before him gonna be gathered all nations when he come back to this earth to judge and make war. All nations gonna be gathered before him. Amashiach Yahweh Shai, what he's gonna do. And he shall separate them one from another. I don't care if you wanna be integrated all you want to. When Amashiach Yahweh Shai come back, he gonna what? He shall separate them one from another. He gonna separate all the nations one from another. See? As a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. As a shepherd divided the sheep from the goats. Read. And he shall set, set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. He set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. You understand? That's separation. Read. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand. Which is the sheep. Remember, it's the sheep. As we are, the lost sheep of the 12 tribes of Israel, read. Come, be blessed of my father. Come, be blessed of my father, read. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The kingdom is prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Look, the most High told the Adamites, Adam and Eve. Hey, look, he said, hey, you can eat of the tree of life. You know what that meant? You can eat on a, this tree that's going to give you everlasting life forever and ever and ever. Follow what I'm telling you. Do what I say do. Don't deviate. But you can't eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because you don't need to know anything about what? Evil. You understand? But what do we do? We ate of the tree of good, of the knowledge of good and evil. Now here we are now, born into a world that's straight up evil. What good is in this world? Nothing but we, the children of Israel, that's bringing forth this truth, and we have all kind of opposition against us, bringing forth the truth. Why? Because the world is wicked. Proverbs 16 and 4. So y'all y'all think this world gonna last forever, no? The people that's ruling now are in order. What did Most High say? The book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 4. The Most High have made all things for himself. The Most High made everything for himself, read. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. You know, even the wicked for what? For the day of evil. That's why he let the wicked rule last. For what? 
for the day of evil. For the day of evil. So you think you'll get righteousness out of the wicked? Come on. You ain't gonna get no righteousness out of the wicked. He made them for the day of evil. That's why, give me Zechariah 13 and 8. for the day of evil. So that's why we can't follow what they can do. We can't even do the same things they do. We have people in melody. We don't, we can't do even take the things that they say you got to take in medications and so forth. Because our anatomy is different. They come from us. But no people in melody. So what do you think? We go, we come out of the sun, we feel good, we get energized. They go in the sun, it, 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 it hurts them. Right. Come on. We ain't got to, I ain't never woke up, woke up and said, what's the UV rays today? <laughs> Let me make sure the UV rays is all right so I can go outside. Sunscreen and all that. We ain't never thought about nothing like that. That's different. Let me give you something else. When they do their, they do their experiments in the lab, right? Do they use rats that have color and pigment? Or do they use albino rats? Mites. They use albino mice. They don't use mice. These rats that we see running around here. They got albino rats. You see what I'm saying? Because their anatomy is not like us. This world is theirs. It's their world. I tell you anybody's trying to say it's some other nation's world. They the superpower of Earth. Are you kidding me? Come on. You can't tell me no nation that has murdered, raped, pillaged, and, and killed more people than a so-called white man. Name them. Start adding them up. Come on. Y'all rolling around on, on, on stolen ground. Eh? How many how many graves you think under the ground that we're we rolling up right now? That's why the earth, most of us say this earth is defiled on the habits thereof. You be walking, your house could be on a damn grave. When, they, when the Twin Towers came down, our bodies was right there at the bottom of it. Slaves. Where do you think the stock market came into play? Right from us. The boxing and us on the, on the, the auction boxes and so forth. So we got to look at ourselves and coming back to the most high so that we can get ready for this kingdom that was prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Because we are the sheep of the most high. And we got to get ourselves together, people, before it's too late. Where you at? The book of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass. It's going to come to pass in the future, he said. That in all the land, saith the Most High. All the lands where we scattered them, right? Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. You got two parts. Going to be cut off and die, y'all. Two thirds of our people going to be cut off and die. Most I gonna kill two thirds of our people, y'all. That's why we're here to warn you to repent and come back to his laws that you come back with. Have faith in the Mashiach outside going to the most high on our behalf before it's too late. Read. But the third shall be left therein. The third, a third of we the children of Israel gonna be left. That's the remnant. That's the election. That's the few, the many, the all, which is a certain number. It don't mean every last Israelite. The sanctified, the glorified, the sheep that hear of Mashiach Yahweh voice, the call, the chosen, all these words that the Mosai used pertaining to what? The third shall be left therein. That the third of Israel gonna be left therein. What is he gonna do with the third, the one third? And I will bring the third part through the fire. He's gonna bring us through the fire. Okay? And we'll refine them as silver is refined. And refine us as silver is refined. You understand? Give me Je uh, Jeremiah 23, 29. So he's bringing us through the fire right now. Because the kingdom of heaven comes without observation. You're going to say it's over here, over there. That's what, that's what the apostles thought. When the Mashiach of Shai died, rose on the third day, walked the earth for 40 days, they said, hey, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel at this time? You back, man. Like, we waiting them to come back right now. But the prophecies hadn't even happened. That's why it's so important that you understand your calling. There's nothing more important than the calling that you've been called in these last days, man. Normal men, righteous men, people that you would not even imagine would love to be where we at and know what we know. 
But they're not because they have not been called. Read. The book of Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29. This is how we're going to be brought to the fire and being brought to the fire, right? It's not my word like as a fire? Yeah, his word is like fire. That's how we're being brought to the fire by the word of the Most High. Understanding the word of the Most High, right? And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Yeah, they say like a hammer that will break the rock in pieces. Je Jeremiah 1 and 10. You understand? That's why we here. How you doing, brother? You know, we here to get our people to come out of the gross darkness, gross ignorance that you're in. Because you don't even know who you are. I got 74 different identities asking my brothers and sisters who you are. What's your race? Simple as that. All kind of identities, man. You were beyond your imagination, what our people say. I was out here one night, and I asked the brother, what's your race, man? I said, I explained to him that your father's father's father, you can go back that far, your father is who you are, who you come from, the man. He said, I'm Brooklyn. <laughs> and he left saying, I'm Brooklyn. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man, I'll be with as lost as lost can be. <laughs> He said, I'm Brooklyn. I'm like, man, that's a city in New York. I don't care. I'm Brooklyn. I'm like, wow. That's it. I mean, that's just one. I mean, it got many, man, that's like beyond your imagination. Let's read. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down to build and to protect. Moreover, you know, this is what he told Jeremiah, and we following the same suit, man, to bring down all the lies that's been taught. But see, a lot of you wicked, right along with the wicked, Amos, 3 and, Amos 9 and 10. So y'all wicked, right with the wicked. That's why we're here to tell you, you gotta repent, come out of that. You had an opportunity to come out of that. You ain't gotta, you don't have to be wicked. Most of the laws is not hard to follow, man. Unless you just want to be wicked, you want to burn in the fire, because you're going to burn people up, man. He, he, do you understand that the so-called white man is his sword? That's his sword. That's why he's shooting everybody down. And what's the verdict? Not guilty. Most I got his hand in that. Believe this. Because he the one that killed and make a lie. But see, I don't want to, he going to get your attention one way or another. He going to get your attention. Believe that. Be. The book of Amos, chapter 9, verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. You know, all the sinners of the Most High people who are the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, shall die by the sword. Let's read. Which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Say, the evil ain't gonna mess with us. They don't even come to me, because I'm saying, I'm filled with the blood of Jesus, and, and I speak in tongues. And I'm sanctified and glorified, and can't nobody tell me where well, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. But then you, you walk around, you're a Gentile, and you're really an Israelite. Make that make sense. Well, sorry dealing with you. Not when you, contrary to his word. Read that again, listen. The book of Amos chapter 9, verse 10. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say, the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Yeah. So what are they saying? Amos, excuse me, get uh, Isaiah 40 and 7. So all the sinners, which is breaking the most high's laws, which you taught you ain't under, you ain't got to follow, because you're under mercy and grace. But yet still, you ain't got to follow the laws that he say, but he gonna give you mercy and grace for being wicked. Make that make sense. you wicked as ever. You eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, catfish, it is all the abomination, everything that you do to, and you also are morally unfit, committing adultery, stealing from your people, you know, lying to your people, yet still, that's in the Ten Commandments. You don't serve the Most High with all your heart, mind, and soul, and strength because you don't follow what He say do. And yet still, He gonna give you mercy and grace. <laughs> You don't get mercy and grace in this world. So y'all done created your own power. Y'all done created your own God. Most of you are in your mind, you done created your own God because you don't know him from the Bible. Because you ain't been taught him in the Bible unless you come and learn from the Hebrew Israelites. Straight up. 
of those that have learned from the Hebrew Israelites and then going to their churches and teaching what it is that we bring them for, that you are Hebrew Israelite because most of us say we know us. But they say, they, our people say what? The evil ain't going to touch me because I feel with the blood of Jesus. Yeah, y'all feel with the blood of, of, of Caesar Borgia. <laughs> That white image that they set up, because you ain't filled with the blood of a Mashiach that was shot, because you don't believe in them. Because you ain't standing up against the so-called white man saying that he's the most high. You be standing up against the so-called white man that say he's a Mashiach that was shot, the Lord and Savior. It would matter to you if you say you love him. B. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 7. The grass withereth. Isaiah 40 and 7. Chapter 45, verse 7. Come. I formed the light. What he said. Well, we're here because a lot of people say, ah, the evil ain't gonna touch us. Read. And create darkness. What's that say? Form the light and create darkness, read. I make peace. I'll make peace, read. And create evil. You know what he said? So when our people say that the evil not gonna touch or, or prevail against us, they say, what they said, the most high, you can't touch me. You can't touch me, Most High. Me. I, the Most High, do all these things. No doubt about it. Deuteronomy 32 and 39. Say, I, the Most High, do all these things. You understand? This is what the Most High is doing. So you're saying the Most High can't touch you. And you don't even realize you said it because you don't know these scriptures. You don't know that that passage is in the Bible. But you, all you don't hear my voice, you don't know it from this point on. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 Verse 39, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no power with me. You know, the most high is one. So there ain't no power with him, right? I kill. He said, I kill. I kill, right? And I make a lie. And I make a lie. What the most high say he does, right? I wound. He the wound. Somebody get wounded? The most high wounded him, right? And I heal. He the one that heal. Read. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Most I said you can't deliver yourself out of his hand. You talking about the most I can't touch me. Evil ain't gonna touch me when he create evil. But y'all know him like that. Y'all just know him as love. You done created your own power, I'm telling you. Read. Verse 20. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say. I live forever. That's right. Most I say he lift, lift up his hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Come on. If I wet my glittering sword. Uh oh, if he wet his glittering what? Sword. He can wet his glittering sword, but he said, oh, the sinners of his people are gonna be killed by his sword. If he wet his glittering sword, really? And mine hand take hold on judgment. If his hand take hold on judgment against you, really? I will render vengeance to mine enemy. Because you become his enemy because you're not following what he say do. He gonna render vengeance to you, right? And will reward them that hate me. He gonna reward you that hate him. You can't say you love him if you're not gonna keep his commandments. He said in 1 John 5 and 3, this is the love of the Most High that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Come on. Verse, verse 41, verse 42. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood. You know, you're gonna make his arrows drunk with blood. I mean, you're gonna be killing a whole lot of people. That's why we're here to warn you, Israel. Read. And my sword shall devour flesh. You know, his sword gonna devour flesh. Come on. And that with the blood of the slain and of the captive from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. You know, that of the slain and the captives upon the beat. Read. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants. He's going to avenge the blood of Israel. Now give me uh, Psalm 17 and 13. See, the most high, he's going to avenge the blood of his servants. But right now, man, we in Jacob's trouble. We in the time of our troubles. Y'all say all the sinners of his people are going to be killed by the sword region. The book of Psalms, chapter 17, verse 13. Arise, O power, disappoint him. 
cast him down. Say, rise, O power, disappoint him, and cast him down. Come on. Deliver my soul from the wicked. Say, deliver, he's praying, he said, deliver my soul from the wicked, Read. which is thy sword. Which, which is what? Which is thy sword. You that the wicked uh, is, is the most high as what? Which is thy sword. Yeah, they were made for the day of evil, but this white man, the so-called wicked man, is what? Which is thy sword. Yeah. He said, deliver deliver him from who? My soul from the wicked. Deliver his body from the wicked, right? Which is thy sword. Which is thy sword, man. He's made for the day of evil. So the most high used him as he killed people with the wicked. It's the most high sword. Y'all don't understand that because it's probably over your head. Romans 13 and 1. So we end this. And all you're going to get out of it is to have a relationship with the most high. In the name of the Lord and Savior. Point blank. No hand ifs or buts about it. That's the only way we're going to reach him. And he looking down at us. Like he said, all the sinners of my people are going to die by the sword. You're going to have them killing you. It's already in the making. Oh, what are we going to do now? What are we going to do now? Hey, he just told you. I'm going to use my sword, which is the wicked, to kill you. You don't come back to him. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. Not, we ain't got no higher power. He said, let every spirit, every soul be subject to the higher powers. Read. For there is no power but of the Most High. There ain't no power but of the Most High. Give me that Daniel 4. Hold that. Give me Daniel 4, 17. Ain't no power but the power of the Most High. Most High set up one, set down one. Set up another, set down another. You understand? Over and over again, it's been from the Egyptian captivity. We was in captivity under all these nations, the Egyptians, then the Assyrians, then we were the major ones, I'll say, then the Babylonians, then the birds of the Medes, and then the uh, Greeks, so-called white people coming to power. Then we came into power, Byzantine Empire. Then the white folks came back in power again in 1492 until now. And in between them times, we were in captivity under the Japanese, the Chinese, Jewish people, everybody. All of everybody had their hand and have us in captivity, man. We ain't just come in captivity here in America. We're in captivity. We read the Bible. Most high, we're in captivity. That's why the Most High said this. Read the Book of Daniel, chapter four, verse seventeen. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Who ruled in the kingdom of men? The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. The Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Go back to Romans thirteen and one. You gotta understand this. But he said, a wicked is his sword. Now let's read. The book of Romans chapter 13, verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher power. That's why we in captivity. Under who? The higher power. The higher power. Read. For there is no power but of the most high. Ain't no power on this earth except for of the most high. Come on. The powers that be are ordained of the most high. The powers that be are ordained by the most high. When you read Daniel's the second chapter, and Daniel's the seventh chapter, it tell you in order, in second of order, who gonna be the superpowers of the earth? Right now, we in we in that little that statue that Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of, where the toes is of clay and a lion. We in the latter, the latter, latter days of the Roman Greco Empire, man. Here we are, living it, seeing it, watching for these prophecies to come to be, so we go into our kingdom. Read. Verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, whosoever resisteth the power, which is the Most High sword, read, resisteth the ordinance of the Most High. You resist the ordinance of the Most High. You understand? Read. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Yeah, they that resist will receive to themselves damnation. Read. For rulers are not a terror to good works. Hey, rulers are not a terror to good works. What's good? Well, hold that, Romans 7 and 12. Hey, see, rulers, they're not a terror to good works. That's why we're telling you. 
Y'all of y'all that say we ain't under the law, or well, y'all ain't up with guinea pigs. They're going to use y'all. But with the things they have planned, they're going to use all of y'all because they already got y'all. Satan already got his hand on y'all. But listen, the book of Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Good works. What's good works? Wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. That's right. The commandments of the Most High is what's good. That's the good works. Following the commandments of the Most High. I'm going to take up a shot. said in John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. You want everlasting life? What'd he say? What's good? Give me a uh, Matthew 19, 16. See, a lot of you don't know this because you've been taught you're not under the law. You ain't got to follow the most high. That's what you're taught. Anytime somebody say that, so you say back to them, well, you tell me I don't have to follow the most high? His rules and regulations? When well, you're sitting there at that light, waiting on the light to change to go across the street, even though no cars, and your cars might stop, but you're going to wait till that light tell you I can go across the street. Ain't none of Holly, none of y'all going to walk across that street. Ain't no cars coming. Y'all wait. Y'all in order. You see? See? There y'all go. <laughs> it's just like robots. <laughs> but that's where it is. But the most high rules and regulations. Read. The book of Romans, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? That's what it's all about, y'all. Don't you want to live forever? Don't you want to be able this kingdom that's going to last forever and ever and ever when nobody going to bring you down? No more tears, no more crying, no more sadness, only joy and happiness. You don't want that? You deserve death. Straight up, because you love this world. You're a part of this world, so you love it. But we talk about those that ask the same question and want the same answers. Read it for the top. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? What good thing may I do that I may have eternal life? I may live forever. Come on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Why you calling me good? I got to ask brother, how you doing today, brother? I'm good. As a sister, how you doing today? Sister, I'm good. <laughs> everybody today is what? Good. <laughs> right? That's what everybody's saying. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How you doing, sister? I'm good. <laughs> right? You know what everybody say? You know that, right? Everybody say, I'm good. So let's see what the most high do what my check up shot say. Why callest thou me good? So why you call me good? Right? There is none good but one. He said, ain't nobody good but one, right? That is the most high. So y'all definitely ain't the most high. <laughs> he said, ain't nobody good but the most high. Come on, right? But if thou wilt enter into life, you want to enter into eternal life? You want everlasting life? What he said? Keep the commandments. No. You ain't under the law. You ain't got to follow the commandments. He said, you want to enter into everlasting life? Do what? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Listen, right? He said that to him, which? Say, which commandment? Say, you want to enter into eternal life? Keep the commandments. They don't read this in church. They can't read it to you if they tell you you're not under the law, right? They can't read this to you if they say you're not under the law. Shout out to my right. people. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we're we part of we, we Israel. We're part of the same people, man. No, no, we shake like this. No, no, no. Like anything, we shake like this. That, that's what the white man told you, man. No, no, no. That's, that's what I'm you, man. Like this? How? Yeah. No, no, no. Well, show me where, show me how you, how you say it. Latino, Latino. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, show me. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> cool. That, that, ain't, that ain't what he said. That's, that's cool. That's our old thing. <laughs> that's right, brother. Okay. Read. He said unto him, which? He said, which commandment should I keep? Read. The master Yachter have a shot said. Thou shalt do no murder. Do no murder. This is the Ten Commandments he's laying out. Ready? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Ready? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Ready? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not lie on your brother and your sister. Ready? Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Come on. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He left him with the second most important commandment. And that's love thy neighbors thyself. That's what he was dealing with. Hold that. Give me your Exodus, the uh, 20th chapter. The book of Exodus, 
chapter 20, verse 12. This is where he started at. He dealing with, because the first part of Exodus the 20th chapter deal with how we honor and serve the most high. Read. Honor thy father and thy mother. This, this is what he's giving them. This is what he gave them. Say, how can I receive eternal life? Listen, read. That thy days may be long upon the land which the most high thy power giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maid servant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Right. So he gave him the part of the Ten Commandments that pertain to how we serve each other. There's a reason why he did this. The last thing he left him with what? Leviticus 19 and 17. He left him with this. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 19 verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's what he left him with. Very important for us to love each other like you love yourself. So you gotta love yourself to love someone else. If you hate yourself, you watch your people that's all grouchy with everybody of Israel, they hate themselves. Cause he said you told us to love your neighbor of Israel as yourself. You understand? So you're satisfied, satisfied with yourself. That's why you hate your brother. That's why you hate your sister. Cause you hate yourself. But if you love yourself, you gotta love your brother regardless. You gotta love your sister. Regardless, you understand? That's why he said you gotta love thy neighbor as thyself. Let's see what the man said after that when he told him this. This is what he told him, right? He shall keep my statutes. Uh, Matthew, Matthew. The book of Matthew, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 19, verse 20. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. He said, Hey, I've been doing all that. I've been, I've been following the, the commandments and how I'm supposed to love thy neighbor as thyself. Read. Really? What lack I yet? So what, what am I lacking? This is what Amashiach Havashai said to him. Amashiach Havashai said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, You want to be perfect? What he said? Go and sell that thou hast. Go sell all you have. Go sell what you have. Read. Really? And give to the poor. And give to the poor, man. I mean, this is very important. For you that don't know, you better understand. We went to Matthew 30. 25 and 31, he said, hey, when I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was uh, hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was in prison, you visited me. You understand? When I need some clothes, you put clothes on my back. He said, well, we did this to you. I'm going to see how say, you never needed nothing like this. He said, well, you done it to the least, the least my brother in, the children of Israel. He said, you done it unto me. So it's very important. Because here he is telling the rich man, the man that had a lot of possessions, you will see what he should do to receive eternal life. You think it's not important? It's very important that we look after each other. See, we've been taught not to look after each other, not to be there for each other. That's why we so jacked up, right? Go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor. See, go sell that you have and give to the poor, right? And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. You have treasure in heaven. Come on. And come and follow me. Say, come and follow him. That's why this ain't about no material, this, that, the third, and all that. Because all you see right now is going to be blowed up, man. Burn up. You're going to burn this baby up. So you love all this material wealth and all the things you can get in this world. There's nothing wrong with having something. Living all right. But when you, your mind is continually on that, say the love of money is the root of all evil. When you're just chasing after money, 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 you look at it. There's evil behind that, man, because of evil right there on that money. The wicked is whose pictures on that money. The damn wicked. Straight up. You carrying it all the time. You carrying wickedness all around. Everywhere you look, there's nothing but wickedness. You can't say it was righteous. The most people on the damn money were slave owners. Slave owners. Had us in captivity, slavery, and bondage. What did they do to us in slavery? Do I need to go through that? You better recognize, man. And what are they, what's happening with us now? So I say, man, go sell all you have and give to my poor, the poor people that need something, that's, that need something more than you. Philippians 2, 
and let's book it at first three. This is what's important. When the master checked outside, when the lady was anointing him with oil, they said, hey, what you doing? With the alabaster oil, box of oil. She said, they said, hey, man, we could take them and, and sold it for much and give it to who? The poor. This is what we done as a people, man. I'm talking about the SC. Everybody, we got all kind of Israelites, all kind of people. Just like you got all kind of people in the world, you got all kind of Israelites. Some, they don't want to do that. You hear what he told them? Sell what you have and give to who? The poor and come follow me. Hey. The book of Philippians chapter two, verse three. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Yeah, man, that's why you gotta be humble. Don't do nothing but through strife or vain, worthless glory, man. You wanna be somebody in this damn hell hole this pit of hell that we in right now. Vain glory, man. This is your consolation right now. Read. But in lowliness of mind. That's lowliness of mind is humility. Humbleness, read. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Let, let each esteem others of our nation better than themselves. Come on. Look not every man on his own thing. Don't think like what you got. Look what I got. I'm living lives, right? But every man also on the things of others. Yeah, I mean, we gotta look out for our brothers. That's why he told them, told them, sell what you gotta get to the poor, right? Let this mind be in you, which was also in the Mashiach Yahweh shot. Yeah, let this mind be in you, which was also in the Mashiach Yahweh shot. Since you said you believe in him, so let this mind be in you, that was it also in the Mashiach Yahweh shot. That's why he told them, hey, go sell what you got and give to the poor. Go back to Romans 13. You understand? So it all fits in how we got to be as a people to please the most high. That's the only way. All right, Shalom, brother. Good seeing you again. Yes. That's love, man. Romans 13. The book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 4, verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works. Yeah. Rulers are not a terror to good works, man. If you follow these laws, that's commandments of the Most High, doing what's right. Come on. But to the evil. But to the evil. Those that are not following his laws, that's commandments, man. Read. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Yeah. The Most High said, do that which is good, which is what? Keep it as long, and you have praise of the same. That's why he said, if you please the most high, he make even your enemies be at peace with you. But y'all don't believe that. That's why all you gotta do is just bang on Esau, bang it, bang it, bang it, bang it, bang it on Esau, and what you gonna get out of it? Nothing. Esau come up and say, huh, hands up, up, hands up. <laughs> we ain't waiting for no war against Esau. I'm not sure I got a shot. And the holy angels coming to bring them down. Understand this.